Hi everyone, welcome back for another video on our solar and energy usage here in Norfolk in the UK. And um, it's been an odd month for the month of May. It's been a bit transitional because just a week or two ago we were heating the house using the portable heaters. Remember that test that I'm doing rather than using the central heating at all, I'm using portable radiator heaters. And uh, it just seems odd that we were heating the house the other day now we're actually cooling it with air conditioning because the weather has changed and it's now 20 to 25 degrees. It, it's a nicer temperature, it's what you'd expect for May, June, but uh, May was an odd month where it looked like we weren't gonna generate very much solar to start with because we had so much rain and uh, so many dark days, but then it improved. And I've gotta say, I think it was actually a good month for us here. We generated in total, um, oh, I don't know, I'll have to give you the actual stat in a moment. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but uh, what I did notice was it was more than August last year. So yes, less than May last year, because we had an exceptional May last year, but it was more than August. And you think, well, well, that's not bad, is it? I mean, August is a summer month, so if we beat August last, last year, then that's... Hello, cracker. That's still pretty good, so I'm quite happy. And as I've said in my earlier videos, anything over 500 kilowatt hours that we generate is, a, is enough, just enough for us to run everything we need. So anything above that means we've got a nice excess and we've got more freedom and we can do more things and there's less restrictions and less we'll do this at this time and not that time. Just the more you have, the more flexibility you have. And uh, we were over 700 kilowatt hours this month. So we, we had absolutely loads for the car, for the hot water, for heating the house, for cooling the house, for everything that's been needed. Uh, just before we get into the stats, um, further updates, air source heat pump. I suppose that's on hold and it's on hold one because I still haven't got a quotation and that's partly because the grant that I was going to use is no longer available. So the reality is would I really be spending 10,000 of my own money on an air source heat pump to replace a boiler that's working perfectly well? Well at the moment no because I still want to do that testing with these portable heaters to look at alternative ways to heat your house and is an entire system for that large scale amount of money is that worth it for um, our home which is very well insulated and doesn't use that much energy to heat it compared to some others so there's more investigation to do i still want the quotation another quotation i'm going to be seeking in the next month or so is a full air conditioning system install so a system that can heat as well as cool so that's what I'm looking for as well. So probably in three or four rooms to install um, air conditioning units that are then linked to compressors outside. And those compressors can be run in reverse and provide heat as well as cooling power. And I think they do have a decent cop value of two as well. So they do run at um, lower wattage than they might otherwise. I mean, the units we've got at the moment, they run at 900 watts. And you think 900 watts for an air conditioning unit isn't too bad but the ones we've got the portable ones they don't kick out heat as well so it'd be nice to have some nice fixed ones a bit more easy to install and deinstall i'd like them to be remote controlled and smart so anyway more quotations coming um, i'm going to be looking at the air conditioning solution rather than an air, air source heat pump solution as well so i'm going to keep looking at heating solutions and when i find something that looks like it's working for me and that i will include infrared so i'm going to be looking at infrared glass panels as well for some of the wet rooms and see whether we can install some additional heating methods as well in the house so there's still lots to look at with heating so i haven't stopped but if i don't um, share anything with you in the next month or so it's not because i've stopped it's just that i am taking my time i'm not rushing into anything with a snap decision this is a long process to make sure everything's right it's not urgent because we've got a heating system that works. So it's just a case of getting it right for the future. Other things that are happening, I mentioned that uh, we're looking at um, new battery solutions. So the Give Energy system will be removed and something else will be arriving. Um, I'm actually going out today. I'm going out today to see Christian at Power Different. I'm um, going over to his uh, warehouse uh, and his office to have a look at what's available and have a chat about what we're going to do next. So timing wise, I can't give you the update right now, but there will be an update coming soon on what we're doing battery wise. I think I've definitely learned with the testing that I've done that a five kilowatt hour battery for us isn't quite enough. Money wise and making the best use of it, it 
works quite well we can utilize it. i mean now in the summer um if i don't use anything overnight then we'll wake up and we have nearly 70 percent of battery left from a five kilowatt hour battery so in the summer it hardly gets used during the day at all and uh, there's very little usage at night so it's plenty big enough but in the winter five kilowatt hours just isn't enough to do what we want and five kilowatt hours isn't enough to provide that flexibility if you want to boost charging your car in the morning and there isn't a lot of solar but you want to use the energy in the battery the five kilowatt hour battery i have got at the moment just doesn't give me that flexibility so the testing i've done has, has taught me that i need a little bit more i want a bit more power and a bit more capacity in a home storage battery Anyway, there's enough of um, what's been going on over the month. Let's get into the statistics and you can see in the numbers how it's been going for us. But I think a pretty good month overall. Right then, here we go. So our combined generation for the month of May was 774.5 kilowatt hours. Not too bad. And as I said, more than August last year, which is really good. Our Solis inverter, 3.6 kilowatts with 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels connected. That generated just under 500 kilowatt hours. The best day was the 30th of May where we generated 29 kilowatt hours on this array. And the worst day was the 8th of May where we only generated 3 kilowatt hours. Our solar edge inverter, that's a 2 kilowatt inverter with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. That typically generates about 55% of the first inverter. So we generated a total of 277 kilowatt hours for the month of May using the solar edge inverter. So added to the almost 500 of the first inverter, that gives us the total and that's what gives us plenty of energy. Adding that second array has really helped here. Something I've noticed over the last month or so is that the Solar Edge app is even more accurate at the moment for import and export values. So it's only a tenth out from what Octopus Energy says and obviously bills me for. We exported a shade over 242 kilowatt hours for the month and imported just over 50 kilowatt hours. 33 of these, those were imported during plunge periods. So there were two during the month of May. So it's 33 kilowatt hours that I didn't pay anything for. In fact, they paid me a fraction of a pence to consume that energy. The Give Energy battery solution doesn't show the same level of accuracy for import, export and generation, but it does show 93 kilowatt hours going into the battery from solar and 76 kilowatt hours or just over coming out of the battery. These charts from Give Energy are quite good. On the generation side, it shows what the uh, sunlight was like during the month on the top chart. And then you've got the grid draw in the one in the middle. So you can see the two days where we imported quite a lot because of the plunge prices. And then the export below. So the more sunshine there is, the more we're starting to export. Our solar panels face almost directly south, just slightly southeast. And what we can see here on one of the days in May is that the curve looks very, very even. So we're obviously getting to a midpoint in the year where we're optimizing the amount of solar that we're getting. Those 50 kilowatt hours from the grid, that cost us a whopping £9.65 for the month, including the standing charge, and at an average price of just 6.18 pence per kilowatt hour. So those two plungers in the month of May really helped reduce the average price. And yes, at the moment in the UK, the Octopus Agile prices are very high on average. But as you can see, I'm only paying 6 pence a kilowatt hour. Very, very happy with that. Okay, moving on to the My Energy app, we can see we added 156 kilowatt hours. Uh, that's from the Solar Energy and also using the plunge pricing, so boosting in the night. That was 156 kilowatt hours into hot water via the Eddy device. And then 117 kilowatt hours added to our Mini Electric via the My Energy Zappy device. And finally, 320 kilowatt hours was consumed in the house. Now, partly that's charging the battery as well. Of those 320 kilowatt hours consumed in the house, the Kessa smart plugs are monitoring some of the devices we have, and three smart plugs monitoring the portable radiators and heaters show that we used 26 kilowatt hours on one, 55 kilowatt hours on another, and 17 kilowatt hours on the third radiator. The fourth radiator that I have I've only just acquired and don't have an energy monitoring smart plug for it yet. 
I am monitoring our air fry usage though and that consumed just under 5 kilowatt hours for the month and our TV system with a media player and soundbar etc that was just over 3 kilowatt hours for the month. And finally, one of the things that I haven't reported previously is the efficiency of the Mini Electric. So if I look at the Zappi for the overall figures on how many kilowatt hours we've put through the Zappi and take away that number from the same value for when we had the Kona Electric, the difference between the two will be exactly how many kilowatt hours I've added through the Zappi into the Mini Electric. Add to that the number of kilowatt hours I've added on public charging, which has just been pod point chargers, and then I should be able to work out the miles per kilowatt hour. And that includes all the charging losses and everything in its entirety, including preconditioning. So the Mini Electric is reporting 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour for the last thousand miles. So what you can see is what the car reports is a higher value. When you take into account all the preconditioning, the balancing of the battery, and the charging losses, and everything else, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour is what I'm really getting on how many kilowatt hours I'm consuming and paying for versus the miles that I'm actually traveling in the car. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope there was something there that you found useful. And uh, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe with the video and also leave some comments. I would love to hear what you're doing with your solar configuration and electric car, etc. And what your statistics were. How have you been getting on for the month of May? Anyway, look forward to uh, sharing another video with you soon. Take care. Bye for now.